Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the form book. Looking ahead to the all-weather finals day at Newmarket and Dubai. The sun is shining on Maidan and we're going to look ahead to the Dubai World Cup meeting. Lots to enjoy on this week's edition of the form book. <laughs> Yes, and as you can see, joining me will be Katie Midwinter, Tipstar champion and Racing TV's very own Jack Nicholl. Now, of course, you might remember Jack from YouTube and his show Flat Out. Now, that's going to be returning to YouTube in a couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for that around the Craven meeting for Flat Out. So we're going to get straight into it. And let's have a look at the racing that's coming up first off at Newcastle. Competitive card there. Loads of interesting races. The Burrowden Stakes at 118 is particularly interesting. And Katie, start with you. Who do you like in the 118? I quite like the look of room service for Kevin Ryan. I think he's an interesting contender in here. I like his form ahead of Dragon Leader from last season, a cult that is otherwise unbeaten. Um, he beat him at Doncaster and Johannes Brahms was in third for Aidan O'Brien. He had previously placed in a group two. And I think his third at York prior to that, that has been frank quite nicely as well. The runner-up stylist went on to finish third in the juvenile turf sprint uh, behind Royal Ascot winners Big Evs and Valiant Force. Now, my concern with room service is that he hasn't raced over further than six and a half furlongs, but the ground was quite testing at Doncaster and he galloped all the way to the line and his pedigree suggests that he will stay. He's Sayo in a group two over a mile, his dam stayed the mile and he has a half brother with proven form over seven furlongs. So I'm hoping that he will have enough stamina to cope with this step up in trip. As for the all weather as well, he's unraced on it, but his sire has a strike rate of 36% winners to runners on an all weather surface. So I'm hopeful that room service could run a nice race and maybe get into the places. OK, room service then for Katie in the Burrowden. And, and Jack, you're in agreement. I am, yes. Uh, I don't really have too much more to add to what Katie said. Obvious concerns about uh, staying the trip. He has an Irish get Guineas entry. So in terms of, I think, from what connections think, they they don't have many doubts for that. They, they probably had quite a few options to go down, staying at six furlongs, being one of them. But they obviously see him as a mile and that. That, that only bodes well in, in terms of confidence. So, no, um, yeah, room service for me as well. Two votes then for room service. I've flown through that race uh, because there's no betting yet. It's the only race on that card with no betting. But we are, of course, sponsored once again. Thanks very much to Bet UK. Uh, remember, you can get, get £30 in free bets when you bet £10 with them. This is for new customers only. Deposit and place a bet within seven days and settle the £10 minimum bet at odds of four to five or greater to be credited. T's and C's do apply. So thanks very much to Bet UK and obviously a big day for them coming up. The next race, though, is the 153. This is another competitive looking contest. Give you the betting. This is the marathon. Four to one, Fav Spartan Army. Nine to two, Max Vega. Five to one, Palace Boy. Six is Vaguely Rural. Ten to one, Pride and Citizen General and Tyson Fury at 12s. And it's 14 to one, Bar. Come to you first on this occasion, Jack. Who do you like in the marathon? Well, I think it's important to start by saying... Uh, this is actually a handicap. So the Burden is is the only conditions race on the card. That they've changed it up a bit this year, and, and it's going to make it, things a bit more competitive uh, as opposed to just running on levels and and whatnot, weight for age and 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 the like. And the horse I I quite like here is Pridwin. Uh, the form line between him, Spartan Army, and Vaguely Royal at, at Lingfield uh, the other day. Th there's not too much to pick out there, but I, I was quite taken with Pridwin. He had it. He had to come wide, and in my opinion, he came out best of all. He's a he's a pound better off for, for the winner that day, but I think he's a big each way player at around ten to one here. I think the track will suit him much better than the turn and track, as I say, of Lingfield. So, yeah, he's a fairly solid each way selection on the card, actually. Okay, Prud win each way then one fifty three Newcastle then for Jack Katie. Your selection was a non runner, so I don't. Was there anything else you wanted to say about this race, or was this one that you'd probably be leaving alone? Yeah, not much to say. I was hoping that one smooth operator would run over this trip, but we're going to see him later on in the card. The one I'd be most interested in is Citizen General, and he's a decent each way price at 12 to 1. So he'd be the one I'd be leaning towards, but not a particularly strong fancy in this race. OK, next up is the 225. Here's how they bet. Fire Demon, 7 to 2, Fav. Sommelier, 5 to 1. 11 to 2, Blueprint. 6 to 1, Media Shooter. 7s for Tarsis and Havana Ball, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, Bar. Either of you a strong note here? Jack, start with you. Anything that catches your eye? 
No, not too much. I, I think this is probably the one race that I'm going to keep my powder dry. Yeah, for for the card at Newcastle, it's just the 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 unknown of of the two year olds training on. Obviously, you've got a few that have um have been campaigned over the winter, but I think there's probably a bit the bit of, a bit of doubt in my mind in terms of, of what, what to go with. Yeah, and I think there's better punting opportunities elsewhere on the card. What about yourself, Katie? I'd be in complete agreement with Jack. I'm not with a strong fancy in this. I think Fire Demon is probably the one to beat. But I'm not convinced by him over this trip. Uh, Blue Prince maybe would be the most interesting of the others, but I think it's a bit of a tricky race. OK, that's what we like. If you don't have a selection, no need to get involved. Plenty more betting opportunities across the course of Easter. Next up is the three o'clock. Five to two, five is nine temps. Shades of Summer at seven to two. Wildside at sevens. Uh, Sybil Charm, Cloud Cover, Amorous Grey at eights. And Just a Spark at tens. 14 to one bar. Who wants to start first here? Katie, selection here? I've got quite a strong fancy in this one. I like Hodskill for Adrian McGuinness. I think she's on a handy mark of 95 with Adam Caffrey claiming three pounds. Last July, she was third in a listed race at Chelmsford, a length and a three quarters behind White Moonlight, who's rated 106, and a neck behind Queen Aminatu, who loves the all weather, and she's rated 105. And Heredia, who went on to win the Group 3 Atlanta Stakes at Sandown, was behind in fourth that day, and she's now rated 108 after placing in a Group 1. Hodgkill's been running well at times at Dundalk over the winter, when only a couple of pounds lower than a current mark. And Adrian McGuinness saddled 15 flat runners in Britain last year. Nine of those finished among the top four with two winners. So I think Hodgkill, she's probably one of my stronger fancies of the day on Friday. I think she's a really nice each way price as well. So I'm hoping she runs a big race. 14 to 1 for Hod's Girl. Nice selection there. What about yourself, JN? Yes. So nine tenths was really impressive the last day. It would concern me slightly that William Haggis thinks that he has to enlist the services of, of Jack Enright to take £7 off. He obviously thinks that she's not overly well handicapped. As I say, it's not a conditions race of why she would have been well off with a lot of these rivals. But in it, as it is, she's going to have to lump around 9-12 minus his claim. And I'm not sure Jack Enright um, w- would have uh, much experience uh, around Newcastle. So that, that would be an- another negative for me. Therefore, horse who who has run at the track and is a, a good jockey booking as well as Danny Tudhope in that Aramis Grey. Such a, a durable and consistent mare. Uh, if, if she actually repeats what she did in this race last year, uh, as Katie mentioned, Queen Aminato, she's a proper all-weather tool. Uh, Aramis Grey was second to her, just given best late on. And I think a reproduction of that effort w- would see a, to, very much to the fore here. She's very closely matched with Shades of Summer. Uh, the, the horse I mentioned there has beat her twice. That being said, she's conceded Aramis Gray has conceded £16 and £11, beating her twice. This time, she only has to give us £7, and I'm quite surprised that there's quite a disparity between the two. Aramis Gray is in at eight compared to Shades of Summer as four. I'd have them a lot closer now, having just to give away the £7. And I think, based on her really consistent profile, it's very hard to see Aramis Gray out there, the places here. I'd say this has been the plan all season, and she'd be probably one of the better each-way bets on the card for me. As you can see, as Jack says, eight to one for Aramis Gray in that contest. That's the three o'clock. We're flying through them. Next up is the 335. Four to one Fab here is cover up. Batal Dubai at nine to two. Albashir at fives. Coachella at eights, along with 5,000 to one. Chipstead and Billy Joe at tens. Juan Lapin at 12 to one. Somagand at 14. Apache Outlaw, the same price. And 16 to one are those. Now, you've got a strong fancy in this, Jack. Take it away. I do, yes. Coachella. Now, you. He wouldn't be coming in this weekend thinking of Gordon Elliott, but um, he's done wonders with this horse, to be fair. Around this time last year, he was winning the list of race in, in Maidan. It's interesting they didn't think it'd be worth taking him out, given his course form get, and, and the riches on offer out there, which we'll get on to a bit later on. He decided to go for an all-weather campaign. And to be fair, he for a change of tactics, they, they were kind of being a bit forceful with him. They, they've decided to hold him up this year. And, uh, he, he's already kind of paid his way. He's two wins for in, in four starts. Um, I'm not sure a, a turn and track probably probably suits him. So um, one, one of those wins was at Newcastle. So I'm, I'm pleased to see him back here. I was really quite impressed with that. And his fourth last time out behind the likes of uh, Diligent Harry and Anaf, that form can't be advertised any more than it is. And to be honest, I think that's probably one of the strongest form lines he had. And as it is, at 10 to 1, I think he's an outstanding each way bet there uh, in this race. Okay, that's a note on Coachello. What about yourself here, Kate? Have you got any fancies? 
Yeah, there's a couple I like the look of in this race. It's going to be a tough race to find a winner in 16 runners over six furlongs, but I like the look of Juan Lapan. I think he's on a workable mark over his optimum trip of six furlongs. He ran over an inadequate one mile four last time, um, but he was only beaten by diligent Harry over five furlongs the time before, after suffering an awkward start as well. He did well to finish as close as he did on that day, only a length behind. And diligent Harry is contesting the Group 1 sprint at Maidan on Saturday. So it's a good piece of form. And I think he could run a, a good race. I expect him to run well off a map of 105. I wouldn't rule out Summergan, though. He's at a grand age of 10 now. But he finished seventh in the race last year. He's beaten only three lengths when rated £12 higher. He finished wrongly, but he just had too much to do at the end. But I think he's definitely on a handy mark. And if he's retained his ability, uh, then I definitely wouldn't rule him out. And I will give a quick mention to one at a big price, the EXO. I think he's capable of a big run on his day. He's usually a big price as well. He was seventh to Chipstead last time, but only a length and three quarters behind. He had to check wide to get into a more prominent position on that occasion. He just couldn't hold on to finish among the places, but he was 80 to one. He's placed at 22 to one in the past and finished second in a group three at 125 to one last season. So he's one that's going to be capable of outrunning his odds at a big price. OK, interesting thought. So Juan Lapan and Sommergand to make a pill and don't forget about the EXO. That's a look at that race. Next up then will be the 410. Just give you some of the betting for that one. If I can find it, he's found it. 11 to 4 favourite is also Grand. 7 to 2 for Penzance. Elegant Man at 5 to 1. To Metius Fox and to Catch a Thief at 6 is Blanche Land at 8. 10 to 1 Claymore Hooking and Stormcatcher. 14 to 1 Bar. Now, this of course is the Easter Classic. Pretty competitive affair, this. Just talk about one horse first in this, Jack, if we can. And that's Elegant Man, because I think this is an interesting runner in the ammo. Silks did the business nicely at Dundalk. Hasn't got as much experience as a couple of others in this. I'll come on to Penzance. We'll ask Katie about that one. What do you make of this charge, though? Elegant Man. Yeah, he's, he's the kind of unexposed horse in the race. Uh, only three starts. To be honest, for all he was very impressive this day, his second to Rebels Romance at Kempton there at Christmas, just the other side of Christmas, that's arguably the, one of the strongest pieces of form, as we've seen just by that run there. He's obviously an up, upwardly mobile horse. Still quite unexposed, and look, uh, we, we, I don't think we have reached the ceiling of, of his ability, ability yet. That being said, mark of 108, he's going to have to give give weight away to inform rivals, and I'm I'm just not quite sure what whether he is that good enough to give away that way off 9-12. Interestingly, he comes over from Ireland. I think he's got sold enough claims. He probably wouldn't be for me, to be honest. Have you got a fancy in it, Jack, or is this one you'd sit out? It's probably one I'd sit out. I think also Grand and Penzance, look, they, they've been having a, a really uh, successful winner, haven't they? They've, they've just been winning races hand over fist. Penzance would probably be the one I'd prefer out of those two. I wouldn't usually like to back the Phillies over the Colts and get Heldens over the winter. I just, that, that's the way I'd always kind of go over things. And I think Penzance, the horse at the top of his game right now, this has obviously been the target probably from, from the start of the all-weather campaign. And, I think it, it'd be very hard to keep him out of the, uh, the places. Just a word on Penzance, Katie. Just, uh, just on his win so far this season, he's progressed for the horse watchers. Do you think he's the one to beat or would you be taking on Penzance? I think he's probably going to be there or thereabouts. He won easily on this occasion and was put up £9, which reduced the distance between himself and the second storm catcher, who was second again to him at Newcastle. He's clearly a progressive horse and the handicappers may be struggling to get a handle on him because he keeps winning. But he's up to 98 now, though. It's a career high mark against tougher opposition, I would say. He might get found out, but on his form, he, he's got a, a leading chance in this race and he should be among them if he can cope with the, the other rise in the weights. Have you got a selection, Katie? I'd go for Sabuska each way. It's a competitive race, but I think he has got that bit of class that could see him make the frame. The only concern I'd have is the way he's usually ridden. He's often towards the rear of the field coming late with his challenge, and sometimes it's too late um, and the bird has flown. But he's a horse that will give you a good run more often than not. He's on a handy mark off, off 102, and I think this trip will suit him. Uh, so I'd be hoping that he could maybe make the frame at a big price. 
And the final race is 11 to 4. Fav is dear, my friend in the 440. 5 to 1 for Fast Raj. 6 is for Kingdom Come and Symbol of Light. Fantastic Fox at 7s. McLean House, 15 to 2. Great Gaddian, 8. Final Voyage, 9s. King's Code, 10s. 14 to Tempest and 16 to 1 bar those. Now, I know you've got a fancy in this, Katie. You like the one at the top of the market, dear, my friend. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this horse. He's been in electric form on the all-weather this winter. He had been gelded and had wind surgery, and that seems to have made all of the difference to him, as well as the switch to this surface. He ran in the derby last year, made no impression, was never involved, but he put in a few nice performances as a juvenile, including one third in a listed race at Deauville, uh, behind Victoria Road, who went on to win at the Breeders' Cup, and Blue Rose Sun as well, has gone on to win four Group 1 since, and looks a world beater at times. So there's definitely plenty of ability in him. It's just whether or not he can cope with another rise in the weights. He's up to a mark of 113. He's 16 pounds higher than when he began his winning sequence. But he doesn't appear to be faltering. So hopefully he can put in another good performance. OK, that's Katie on Dear My Friend. Jack, any brief thoughts? Um, someone on the plane over told me Dear My Friend's a good thing. So whatever you believe that or not, wasn't the stewardess. Well, he, he did win the Burden Stakes on this card last year. Obviously, he's got to give a, a bit more weight away this year, chunks of weight. Although I think his, his biggest rival could be Fast Raj. You just look at some of that French form and, and it's it's really quite solid. He's an all-weather tool. I think he's won seven of his 12 starts on the all-weather. And ultimately, I think he, he might be a little bit underestimated in the market, just being a French horse. I think he probably should be a, a fair bit short. I actually, had, I wouldn't have much between the two at all, actually. Um, he, he gets three pounds from the, the Johnson horse who, to be fair, has looked better than ever since he's returned. And Yeah, I can't see too much between them, but at the prices, you can get 7-1 to one about Fast Raj, and he would be a, a, a tentative each-way selection, but I, I think he, he could be one just flying under the radar a little bit. That's a look then at the card at Newcastle. Bet UK sponsoring the majority of that card. So good luck to them. And thanks again for them to sponsoring the show. That's a 15 minute look ahead to the all weather action there. And let's now have a brief look at the bike. <laughs> Yes, as you can probably tell from my sunburn, I've made the trip out to Dubai. Cloudy earlier on today, but it's come out beautifully now and it looks like conditions are set fair for Saturday's action, which you can, of course, watch live on Racing TV. Track looked in great, Nick. Everyone seems pretty happy and uh, plenty of the domestic and, of course, the international raiders working this morning. So let's have a look. Then we're going to have a look at four races, really, to focus on. We're going to stop the Dubai Gold Cup. 11 to 4, Favis Tower of London, 7 to 2, Trawlerman, 5 to 1, Eldar, Eldor of and Suscani, 13 to 2, Cold Train, Enemy at 8 and Sober at 10s. It's 12 to 1, bar those. I'll come to you first, Jack. You've made the case, I think, for the Andrew Boarding Train, Cold Train here. Yes, so I, I just think it's interesting that they're going in, in search of the riches, really. They, they could have kept them to a sort of a domestic uh, campaign like they did last year. They probably had the opportunity of, of going out to Dubai. Um, they stayed, they stayed at home last year. They've, they've come over and searched this year. And he's just a horse that goes well fresh. I was really impressed with the way he won at Ascot first time up last year. And I think they'll have him absolutely cherry ripe for this. Um, as we see, he, he won uh, the Group 2 at York back in August at the Ebor Festival. He's done it very well there, beating Courage Mon and me. Uh, fair enough, he disappointed at Doncaster next time out. And then maybe, I suppose, uh, at Champions Day, he was probably just over the top. But... He's the type of horse that comes alive in sort of the, the first half of the year. And I think around eight to one, he's a very solid each way chance. Uh, Tower of London has already been campaigned uh, throughout the winter. He, he ran and, and just got up, uh, as we'll see here in, in Riyadh, uh, beaten enemy. That form's uh, probably, probably a little bit overplayed. Obviously, he has the fitness edge, but I think this is somewhere short of, of some of the best of the others. Eldar Eldarov, Crawler Man, for example. Now that's proper group one form. So I would be taking on Tower of London for all he is still unexposed and unexposed to the end and still on the up. Trawler Man's interesting. He obviously bombed out in this race last year. He's got to overcome that. Um, but as we saw here, look, Kiprios probably back to his best this day. Um, he left his run in, in Ireland the time before well behind. And it was a real a real proper effort for Trawler Man to get up and, and real Kiprios is. If he's in that form, he will be hard to beat. But I, I just think Coltrane... It's very, very hard to pick holes in his form. But, um, yeah, very much uh, in fear of Trawler Man as well. I think he's a big danger. 
as Jack says, this is, of course, Trawler Man winning on Champions Day, Coltrane back in fifth on that occasion. A good ride from Dottori to get him up. The final one I'm going to ask you about, though, Jack, is yep. Eldar. Eldar of, what chance do you give him? Um, Roger Varian, very sweet on his chances, talking to the media this morning. He thinks his horses, we've already seen him, of course, have success at Doncaster last week. They seem in good nick early. What do you make of him? He's just a horse I've never really quite warmed to, uh, for, for whatever reason. I think this day it was supposed to be just be a bit of a penalty kick for Kiprios's return. As it was, he was somewhere somewhere below his best, and I think it just kind of fell into his lap of Eldor Eldorod. As we saw on the back of that, Kiprios left that well behind, and I'm not sure you can really take the validity of that form at face value, and as a result, I'd be taking him on very much so. OK, that's a look then at the Dubai Gold Cup. Next race that we're going to have a look at is the Dubai Turf. 11 to 4, Fav is due juice. Measured time 7 to 2. 5 to 1, Lord North. Nashua at 8. Danon Beluga at 10s. Factor Cheval 11s. And 14 to 1, bar those. Jack, I'll just come back to you on this one because obviously this is an interesting one from a, a lot of angles. You've got Lord North going for the four-timer. Danon Beluga, who was narrowly denied last year. And you've got Du Juice, who missed the race, of course, last year. Talking this morning, his trainer is suggesting that they've tried things a bit differently because they're worried about him in terms of the build-up. What do you, though, make of last year's form first, if we just take a look at the victory from Lord North? Yeah, so I start with Lord North. I just I think he's getting a little bit too long in the tooth now, and I, I just couldn't have him to what would be an amazing achievement. But if we, if we look at Danon Beluga, who's in the red and white silks, uh, he comes home like a, a freight train and he just fails to get up. And he would actually be my my selection in the race. Again, a bit like the fr French horse at Newcastle. I think the Japanese can be a little bit overlooked at times, um, and, and particularly him in this case, because Doju is the favourite. But a 10 to 1, Dan and Beluga, uh, he, what, when you look at his form, it's clear they've tried him at a mile and a half, and he just doesn't stay that far. Um, I think he's a proper around about 10 furlong horse. Obviously, this is over nine furlongs. Um, we'll get on the Nash one a little uh, second, but I think that could be could be his trip. And uh, he's already done it here. Fair enough, he didn't win the last day, but I, I'd expect him to get a bit closer. And I can definitely see him reversing the form with Lord North. OK, uh, I'm going to give my selection. I'm with uh, Measured Time here. I was a big fan of the Jebel Hatter win. He's got to definitely step up. He's got a lot to find, but I think he's good old Finn's arguably best chance of winner on the card. And I just like the way he quickens here in good style. He's going to have to find more. This is a more competitive contest, but he's a horse on the up. And I think Measured Time could definitely serve it up to them. I'll be taking on Lord North like Jack. I'll be looking elsewhere. And I don't fancy the favourite either, really, despite the fact that they're happier with the prep. You're going for an outsider as well here, Katie. You're with Luxembourg. Yeah, I'm a really big fan of this horse, and I think he looks a bit of value at current prices as well each way. Slightly disappointing last time at Riyadh, but he wasn't too far back. Now, the dropping in him in trip here, which is probably as short as he wants, I've always thought of him as more of a mile and a quarter horse, but rather than a mile and a half horse. So maybe this trip, it maybe isn't his ideal, but I think it won't be too much of an inconvenience for him. Had a couple of near misses towards the end of last season, but really good form, strong form behind uh, August Rodan in the Irish Champion Stakes, then narrowly beaten in the Hong Kong Cup. He's a brave horse, really gutsy, uh, and I just think he could maybe outrun his odds in this field. He's been around for a few seasons now, and he really disappoints, um, and I just think he's being overlooked. So I'd be hopeful that he could outrun his odds of around 12 to 1. Jack Naswa was an eye catcher on this occasion. Uh, we've also got some VT winning the form of this year, uh, last year. What do you make of Nashua for Team Gosden? Well, I, I just add to what Katie says. I think Luxembourg. I'd agree with the points there. He, he probably is a bit overpriced. Group on form in abundance at twelve to one. He probably is quite quite a big price. Nashua closely matched. She is getting a little bit expensive to follow now. Now this would be her only win in her last nine starts. What I would say is that. Probably she she is better coming down in trip. She probably didn't quite well. She definitely didn't stay the mile and a half in the in the Oaks. Ten furlongs maybe have just stretched her. She came she came to hand as the season progressed last year. And I just wonder with with history tells us that I wouldn't want to be on the side of the Gosden horses in this early part of the year. So that would be a negative. What what I would think is nine furlongs could really be the best of a mile to nine furlongs 
Um, it is interesting that they, they do bring do bring her out here, and at ten to one, she's probably a little bit overpriced. But I guess that tells you the competitive nature of the race. Do a juice beat Equinox? Obviously, two years ago, measure time could be anything. Um, so no, it's a race probably I'm most looking forward to here. And uh, yeah, the, the fact that Nash was ten to one tells you how how much quality was uh, on offer. So Luxembourg then in the Dubai turf for Katie at a big price each way. And it's also done on Beluga then for Jack. Next race that we're going to have a look at is the Dubai Shima Classic. There's your betting. Seven to four, Fab is Liberty Island. Three to one, August Road Dan. Six to one, Stars on Earth. Emily Up, John at sevens. Rebels Romance at eights. Junko, nine. Sir Alex has got Spirit Dancer at twelves. And it's 14 to one, bar those. What can I tell you about on the ground? That Last year when I was here, Equinox was... Um, absolutely hyped up by the Japanese press before he ran and they knew that he was a monster. I'm not getting the same vibes with Liberty Island. I think they still think she's very, very good, but I don't think she's an equinox. So despite that solid form, for me, it would be all about August Rodan. And I'll start with you, Katie, because he's your nap, August Rodan. Yeah, I think he's a big price, actually, around three to one, eleven to four at the moment, because he's just an unbelievable horse, top class horse. Derby winner. He's done little wrong in his career. He had two mishaps last year in the Guineas and King George, but he made up for it in other runs and he had excuses on those occasions. I just think he's going to be perfectly suited by this. Um, and if he is at his best, then that price could look like tremendous value um, come Saturday afternoon. We see him here under a fantastic ride by Ryan Moore winning the Breeders' Cup turf. It was just an incredible performance and it was just incredible to see him win in that manner as well. He's so powerful all the way towards the line. I just think they're all going to struggle to beat him. I think he's got that class edge and he would definitely be my nap of the day. This is August Rodin as well as we already saw beating Luxembourg in the Irish Champion Stakes. Some nice shots here that Jack actually got for me. So that's very kind of him. Uh, Jack, what do you make of August Rodin? Would you be in his camp or would you be looking to take him on? No, this isn't a race I, I have a strong opinion on in terms of a, a punch, but I, I do think probably I would if if press go with August Rodin, look, the, the worry would be that the mishaps that Katie kind of mentions, he's, he's a little bit hot and cold. But as we saw by that Breeders' Cup, Cup effort, when he's on song, he, he's very tough to beat. And I, I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. I think Emily Upjohn could could be the forgotten horse. But again, she she's a little bit hot and cold. She can blow out. We haven't seen her since she disappointed uh, Dascot in July now. So it's a long time to come back. Again, the, the worry that Gosden's don't always have theirs fully wound up at this time of year. I remember burning my fingers with the fugue at this meeting in the same colours. But uh, ultimately, come back to August Rodin. Look, if, he, if he's on song, I think the vibes have been quite good with him. We saw him work at, at Dundalk. I wasn't overly impressed with that, to be honest, actually. But um, since he's got over there, he's probably had time to get acclimatised uh, with, with the track and whatnot. And yeah, I think if pressed, I think I probably would side with August Rodin. Interesting you say there that the, the vibes aren't so hot about Liberty Island. Again, for, for a filly, it'd be interesting um, to see her taking on the Colts and Geldens, and it'll be a top effort for, for her to do that. OK, that's then a look at the Shima Classic. Final race that we're going to have a look at then is the $12 million Dubai World Cup. Ujbra Tazora, the defending champ at 9-4. Uh, Derma Sotagaki and Kabir Khan at 9-2. Senor Buscador, the Saudi Cup here at 7s. Newgate, 8. Laurel River and Newgrange, 12s. 16-1 bar. Right. Let's take a look first at the, at the Saudi Cup. Senor Buscador getting up in the shadows of the post to deny the gallant as Butazoro. Katie, start with you. What do you make of the Saudi Cup or what do you make of the two, Senor Buscado and Uzbe Tesoro? Well, yeah, he was so far back on this occasion. He completely flies home. They both make up a lot of ground, to be fair to them. And I'd have them both on the shortlist for this race once again. Um, it's hard to split them, really, because they finish so close together and they come from so far back. Um, they. I think Ushba Tesoro probably just went for home sooner. So on that basis, I'd maybe just fancy Senor Buscador to potentially beat him again. But it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Let's have a look, Jack, at Ushba Tesoro's winning the race last year. He again comes from a mile back. He's one of those. He's slow away, but he always stays on strongly under Yuga Kawada to deliver the goods. 
what do you make of his repeat bid? It's not, of course, an easy thing to go back to back. Thunder Snow's done it. It's a tricky race to win twice. But would you be in the Tesoro camp or looking elsewhere? I'd probably be looking elsewhere. I mean, watching this back doesn't bring back good memories having backed Algiers, to, to be honest with you, Danny. Um, just the way the, the, the race make up, that they go so hard and it, and it can always kind of fall into the lap of a, of a closer. The one who would be a very tentative selection, I wouldn't, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you that I'd be a dirt expert, but um, the horse I would probably, as an each way selection, it's not a great price, but at five to one, Derma Sotogaki. Uh, he he won on this card last year. Um, he was fifth in the in the uh, the Saudi Cup, which we just watched there. He got going all too late, but I just think he's already been there. He's done it. Uh, he's proven when he was second in the in the Breeders' Cup. Um, I think this is race here, isn't it? Um, he he's fine over the distance, and I just think he, it's quite hard to pick holes in his form on his general profile, but. As I say, it's a, it's a very tentative selection and um, there wouldn't be much confidence behind it, all truth told. He was very good here. I do agree with you, Jack, in the UAE derby. And I think if you're looking for one who's already, of course, proven at the track as well as Ubuntu mm. Zoro, he'd have to have claim. So that's a look at Derma Sotagaki. I'd probably be the defending champ, but it would be an uncomfortable watch for me as well. Barrier draw takes place in about an hour. So we'll know a bit more after that as well, whether it can help out. Uh, the fav there. Right, so that's your lot, really. So let's just wrap it up by Jack. Start with you. Your nap is? So my nap is Coachello in the 335, the sprint. I, I was just very much taken when he, he won there over the winter. I think uh, the change, slight, slight change in tactics, holding them up, uh, it's very hard to make the running. Uh, he's better off with uh, on conditions with Batal, uh, Dubai, who's, who's the favourite. Yeah, I can't believe that the disparity in their prices and uh, he's a very, very strong each way selection for me. That's Coachello then for Jack. Katie, your nap is? August Rodan in the Shima Classic. I think he's going to be the class of the field. He's going to take all of the beating. He's an unbelievable colt. And we're lucky to see him again this season after such an exceptional season last year. Um, but hopefully he can get the job done. I think he's going to have too much for the rest of them. August Rodan to paint a picture for me as well. I think he makes plenty of appeal in the Shima Classic. Do take a look at the barrier draws for all these that are happening in about an hour here, six o'clock time, Dubai. Make sure you have a look at those when they're out and see how that could affect your selections. But yeah, I think August Rodan does make a pill in the Shima Classic. So that's your lot for the latest episode of The Form, but we'll be back with a Grand National special. That's just around the corner in association with Bet UK. Thanks very much to Katie and to Jack for their company. Enjoy all the action over Easter. I hope you have a fantastic Easter. Enjoy the action on Good Friday, Easter Sunday. And of course, there's the Grand Irish Grand National on Easter Monday from Fairy House. Enjoy the action and please remember to gamble responsibly.